This week on Backyard Footy. Right, these two guys are in front of me. They play in Europe. How can I be better than them? Playing where I'm playing. So I watch every touch they make, the way they look over their shoulders, the way everything. And I was like, you know, I'm gonna go home and train, same super kick and imagine the same thing. And I did over and over and over until eventually I remember the day when heart was like, yeah, you're starting. You know, I, you know, I couldn't sleep the night before. <laughs> I couldn't sleep. I forgot against who we played. Like my heart was just... Here from Matthews, North Carolina, Charlotte and Hartford. Here in the Eastern Conference. This time he scores. Here they come again. Chance for the shot. And oh. it goes! It's sensational from Ricardo Bacanegra. And to Martinez! He's done it again! What's up, footy fans? Welcome to the 23rd episode of Backyard Footy with your host, Hugh Roberts, where each episode I dive into the backgrounds, journeys, and experiences of professional athletes, former athletes, and anyone that's been involved with the game. I'm very, very excited to have you guys back. I know I haven't been recording in a while. The season's been crazy. We haven't made playoffs anymore. My first time making, not making playoffs in my career. Two new coaches, a losing record. Like, it's just been a crazy season on and off the field, so it just feels good to be back. Have some awesome guests for you guys, the veterans of the team. Let me introduce them to you guys who they have experience from all over the world. First off, we have Steve, Steven Teacott from France in his, what year? Oof, signed when I was 18 and I'm 32, so 14. In his 14th years of pro, Dominic Adoro in his 15th years of pro, Aaron Mom in his 8th eight, eight years of pro, Abdullah Mansali in his ninth years of pro, eight. and Kavan George from in his 8th year of pro. Bro. Oh, Kavan from Trinidad, <laughs> Abdul's from Gambia, Aaron's from here. USA. And <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm from Ghana, Steve's from France. So, a bunch of experiences. I can't wait to dive into this with you guys. We're going to do something a little different. We're just going to dive straight into the story. So, Aaron, why don't you lead us off, talk about your background, where you came from, your journey, how you even got started in this game? Yeah, I mean, uh, born in Boston, uh, started playing when I was like, you know, four or five. As long as I can remember, um, yeah, grew up playing through the normal uh, U.S. type circuits like ODP and all that club soccer stuff that uh, is not really around today. Uh, ended up going to Notre Dame um, on a on a scholarship to play soccer there, uh, <coughs> uh, and then got drafted and now I'm um, here. So I mean, born up back then, there was no academy for you, right? No, no academy. So how did you really? How do you even get started in the game? Do you have a family member that kind of puts you on? So my dad is Trinidadian, so it's kind of been, there's that exposure there. Um, and uh, no, no one in my family ever played soccer kind of before me. Um, my dad was a track, track guy and a lot of like, athletes, but um, the first, I guess, pioneer when it comes to that. Um, yeah, I mean, that's kind of how it started, um, just kind of being from a, very Caribbean neighborhood in Boston. Um, there was a lot of you know, football going around, so jumped on the bandwagon. And you made the uh, U17 national team. Yeah. So when I was 
you know, 16, 17, we made the U17 national team for the Trinidad, Trinidad national oh, team. Trinidad. Yeah, we had our, our World Cup in uh, Egypt, which was pretty cool. Uh, unbelievable experience. Didn't do, didn't do so hot, but... What was it like that, man? It was just, you know, different. Like, you got to see all these other countries and kind of how they were preparing for the games. My first time playing at that level, for sure, um, and kind of uh, seeing what it means to play for a country, and, uh, seeing kind of what goes into that, the pride and all that. So it's definitely an eye-opening experience, for sure. And that kind of helped you progress into college and everything with me. Yeah, it was kind of weird going from that back to the college experience. Um, it's less, you know, less pressure, less, um, less competition, less of a stage. So it was weird going from a World Cup, even though it's a youth World Cup, to that college, that college environment. What was, in, you said you got drafted too, right? Yeah, What's I got, got drafted in Toronto out of college. Um, i say it was like, uh, it was January 2012. So went went to Toronto and was like there for a year and then Salt Lake for five and a half and two and then now we're here. How was the MLS experience? Yes, cool. It was definitely up and down. Uh, when it was good, it was good. When it was bad, it was rough. So that Toronto team was one of the worst teams in the history. <laughs> <laughs> it should have come less, I think, uh, record-wise, that was interesting. Yeah, like, you know, so, yeah. uh, first year, yeah. I don't know if you remember that. But I uh, played against you guys. You guys gave me guys over in Los Angeles, Chicago. What's the problem? <laughs> Who was there on the top? That Toronto team? Yeah. That French. That yeah. Uh, yeah. Torso French. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Julian de Guzman. Uh, oh, yeah. He was actually the guy in Ottawa. That I had not the lost track of his name. Danny Kubermans, that tall striker. Danny Kubermans, really? Yeah, like Ryan Johnson, Ryan Johnson, oh, and uh, oh, Terry this, Dunfield. This guy I forgot, like he, he's a top. As oh. a center back. Oh, he's a tall striker. I oh. no, I know. I forgot. The number, the number combo. It was just Dicky. Is it Danny Dicky? Yeah. There you go. He was a. He was a. When I was a, he there was a, an analyst. Like, you know, That's what I hear about. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, his first year, I'll tell you, my first year of the league, <laughs> his first year of the league, <laughs> what is he talking about? <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. Uh, but yeah, man, that was an interesting experience, and then went from there to Salt Lake, which was completely different. They had like a really solid squad. Did you win it? So yeah, I was there with that dude. Oh, with that dude. You win it. How many years did y'all play together? together? We played together. Uh, when did you leave there? Uh, 12. No, 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 uh, 16. Yeah, so yes. I came to 12 and you came to the I came 13. 13, so we were there for like three years. Three years. Yeah. Yeah. We got to the final. We went to the final. We went to Washington. Wow, I feel like you went to Not for longer, man. Nah, I just went here. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Y'all knew each other back then like that? Or not? Yeah, yeah. Or yeah. Like New England. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's, that's when we thought our uh, player's name was Kenny. But it was Yeah, but they were calling him Kenny. Why would they call him Kenny? I don't know. Yeah. 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 What? Yeah. I know. Kenny's that just like nickname back home. My mom even called me Kenny. Yeah. So, yeah. We know somebody from here. Yeah. He's calling him Kenny. Actually, it wasn't even Kenny, it was K and Ken. But when I came to the country, like uh, in New England, the lady was like, Ken, you know, so can I call you Kenny? It's like, oh, yeah, go ahead, that's more American. <laughs> <laughs> that's how Kenny continued, uh, but back home was like, he and Ken, you know, so that's good. Yeah. <laughs> then what was Vancouver like for you? Uh, yeah, Vancouver was, uh, was an unbelievable city, loved it. The way that they're set up with the stadium downtown, they had like kind of built-in fan support, which was which was cool. It just it didn't quite work out as I wanted to on the field, so it's kind of more the entire experience. But um, none but love for Vancouver. Yeah. 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 
Sport like bigger, like you could play, and I would say you could travel outside the country. So, for me, um, you know, we I play youth, youth 17 World Cup, that's how I get out in the country. You know, I played it the very first time the country went to the you know, like a World Cup. You know, even the senior team, we never go anywhere, even African Commonwealth, but the junior team, you know, that was the first time we, uh, we make it to the you know, African Cup of Nation. We won the championship, then from there we went to World Cup in Peru, and then that's how everything started, you know, that dream started like that. Uh, before that, you know, you have to go some trials, you know, in Africa, you know, they, you have to go, let's say, in America here, if you have to select players, you have to go different states, to pick. so in Gambia, the same thing they do, they went to a different, you know, hometown, village, to, you know, bring players. Then they have to do the final selection, and after it, they bring every village or stuff like that, they bring the girls together and we start playing, like, you know, do the trials, which like 600 kids saw. So out of 600, they have to select all the 30 players. Yeah, so that's how I managed to make it from that 600. So you were just playing in your village? Yeah, you know, I was just playing my hometown, the village, that was it. And and then they come recruit me from there and they told me so you're going to let's say you're going to DC that's where they're gonna do the final so we went to the, the capital in the city so where they have to do the final selection you know, so then out of 600 you have to play only 30 minutes that's it 11 11 30 <laughs> minutes <laughs> bro you can see what you get man that's it man. the coach have to do this you know and the coach was Ghanaian you know from Ghana you know but he's part of it man you know. Some dude, or something. Yeah, great coach, man. We call yeah. him 442. He was yeah. the first guy that I brought a system in, in Ghana. Oh, yeah? yeah? Yeah, man. This guy, man. Because in Gambia, because usually there's a, you know, Gambian coach usually pick who you know of my, you know, like that's common in Africa sometimes. You know, if I'm a coach, I know Steven, I'm going to bring Steven Kidd or Steven Rilletti, bring him in. You know, so that was. And Gambia noticed that they went to bring a foreign coach who doesn't know anybody, so that's how the squad was like. And for some dude, that's a great guy. Man. So it's a long way, man. <laughs> so glad to make it on the U17 World Cup. Yeah. Then so went 17. to yeah, 17 the U20 World Cup again in Canada. That's how I make it to the MLS. Because we play U17 World Cup, uh, U20 World Cup in Canada. Then we went all the way to the finals and we lost against Australia. Score free kick, that free kick made me to come yeah. over to New England. Yeah. <laughs> we beat Portugal on quarterfinals, you know, like, no, like, yeah, we beat round 16, we beat Portugal, Portugal. then the quarterfinals we lose. Wow. Yeah. Then well, who, who recruited you from that? Like? Ah, Steve Nichol, you know, I think Steve Nichol was in New England, you know, he was the head coach. So he recruited me and Saint Ignacy. And that was 2007, but Sydney get to play like a World Cup game. So for me, I start 2008. What is your 19 at the time? 19. Yeah. So, yeah. but you know, it's nice, you know, nice, you know. Mm -hmm. How many teams you went on? Ah, uh, here, MLS three, I would say, New England one, Salt Lake City, you know, to Houston Dynamo. Especially in Shao Lake. In New England, we won Open Cup Finals, which is nice. And for Shao Lake, we went to the MLS Cup Final, we to, you know, Open Cup, uh, MLS Cup Final, and uh, yeah, we went, yeah, we went to the Conquer Cup. You know, so we've been, you know, we've been playing. Now I'm here, for like, then when I leave Houston, I went to Europe for a little bit. Oh. You know, in Finland, I played two years. 
with their family though, how's it you know, juggling? And it's hard, you know, travel with our family and you know, so but that's all my life, man. You gotta go everywhere. So a wife and kid here, right? Yeah. How's how's it been, you know, traveling? It's great, man. Yeah. I've been them around so it's so much awesome. Your family travel to like every team you go to? Nah, I really do just uh -huh. So before it's gonna hurt for them to travel, but now you know, so make it easy and come close. Yeah. So warm a city. <laughs> Queen City maybe. Keep on shooting some nice. How about you doing a little bit? Shaka. Actually my name Shakala started, man. Come on. I don't even remember. You said I was a toy or something like that. Uh, I think it's a Hispanic thing, like Sakala. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know. So I speak of Pablo right now. Born and raised in Tobago. Um, I mean, I really got into football because my uncle was on the national team. My dad's brother. We used to see him on the TV all the time, like in the local league home. You know, like playing for the defense force, and Joe Public was a big team, a big team at home. And just seeing him in like people wearing his jerseys around our village, I was like, yeah, I want to do that. So I told my dad. I think I was around like, age four, and he sat me down. And I was like, you sure this is what you want to do? And I was like, yeah. And he was like, all right, I'm going to buy a ball, some boots, and we're going to go train tomorrow. So we used to always train by ourselves, like in the local park and stuff. I mean, we still train together to, up to today, you know? Like, like, we don't even talk when we train. Like, he knows what I need on what day. Like, he watch my game and say, all right, we're working on this today, you know? like. Like he never, he never gave me a compliment either. You know? That's our, that's our relationship, you know, like, um, and just our family in general. Like, we're not very affectionate. Like, hey, I love you. I never call my mom, mom, dad, dad. It's just like the nickname. That's just our family, you know. So, um, so he was like, all right, well, back home there aren't many opportunities, and being from the smaller island. The two, like, I don't know how to put it, but like, you have to really do a lot to get on the national team, right? Because they, yeah, so whatever, yeah, so, um, yeah, so I had to go and uh, I told my parents one day, I think when I was around like eight or nine, like, I want to move to America or England, like, to play. My dad was like, you sure you want to do this? I was like, <laughs> I was like yeah. I was like, yeah, this is what I want to do. And, like, to get a visa, it's like, it's really difficult. I don't know if the pops ever mentioned that. Like, to, like, it's real, like, it's like one in a million type of thing, right? So my dad got some money, like, he borrowed some money and went to apply for his. He got through, then went to apply for my mom's. They got through, and then like two years after, they applied for us, and then we got through as well, you know. And you know, it was like it was very difficult to leave home. Obviously, you know, your friends, and it's like a tender age. Like, how uh, young? I left home twelve. Twelve. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like kind of forming my own, like becoming my own person, and like you know, I was making a lot of friends and stuff and kind of like ripped me apart from home and then put me in America and to go to school here. Yeah, like, it was just different, like the way they spoke and stuff in Atlanta. And yeah. Just like the food, the food smelled bad to me. Like, you know, we cook the flavor, man. You know, like, <laughs> it was really rough. Like, a lot of days, like, all throughout, like, most of school when I came here, I was eating in the bathroom, man, in a brown paper bag, like, just bread and butter, you know, because that's what my parents could afford, you know, so. Um, and I just didn't want to be around them to talk because they always ask me to talk. I want to hear an accent like, oh, where are you from? Sure, that. Oh, yeah, where's that in Africa? You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I was like tired of like saying it over and over yeah, and over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, so, um, <laughs> you know, when I came to America, didn't have much friends. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, for sure you did. Yeah. <laughs> so I didn't have much friends. So I was like, I mean, my dad and I continued our training. Uh, after his work, he got up like at 3 and then we'd go training for about like, two hours. And he would buy all these equipment like, to pass the ball through, like the, what do you call it, ladders, everything. And we didn't have a car, you know, so we had to take Marta in Atlanta. So it would be like, what is that like? Yeah, the bus. So like, you know, like all the stuff like Dave and them carry, mm -hmm. like we just take down the bus. So it would be like me and them, sometime my mom would come in, like a whole bunch of people like they're like watching their face. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it, was, it was embarrassing for me, like, and for my dad, like recently we were talking about, he was like, yo, I can even get a car for my kid, like to go and drive and you know what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah. we did that for like a few years and my dad was like, oh, he'll pay off man. No more, just keep working. And I was just training because I liked it and I was watching a lot of people on TV, like Premier League. I was watching like Makalele. I, like, oh, I just want to go out and train like them. And I liked Ronaldo, Cristiano Ronaldo. Yeah, like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? So I started in a, like a rec club in Atlanta because we were clueless. Yeah. We didn't know anyone. Then uh, a coach saw me from there and I was like, yo, you shouldn't be here. And we were like, where should we be, you know, like, and we went to uh, Concord Fire, which is like a big club in, in America, and the coach there, Greg Blassingen, like, he took me in as his son. I wasn't living with him, but like, he did everything for me club-wise, and um, got me noticed, like, for ES, Adidas, ESP, yeah. and I went to that, and I didn't know anything about college, because my mind was just focused, and now that I was in America, I was trying to go to England. Because I know America wasn't known for soccer. That's the that's the, the belief back home. In fact, was the belief back home. You know? <laughs> so um, I was trying to just go to England just to see how far I can go. And you know, Greg really helped me a lot. And like, just entering tournaments with that team, nationals and stuff, regionals. And I played ODP sometimes. Uh, you know, uh, like a lot of colleges reached out all the top colleges and we didn't know who they were right and I was just like they were texting my phone and I was telling my dad like I don't know why these, these people are bothering me but can you handle it so he just gave it to Greg and this is the previous coach and he was like oh yeah this one is good this one is good and I was like I, I don't know and I just want to play so I didn't have uh, any like legal documents you know so I had to that X'd out a lot of teams from going, you know what I'm saying? So the only way I could go is to go in Florida. And Florida, the only team then was, they had USF and UCF. And UCF did a lot for me to come there. Like they were the team that was willing to do more for me than, not, not like do more for me than any other team, but they were just going above and beyond. And I'm, I'm about loyalty. And I like, you know what, man, the program was, terrible but somehow I ended up going there and a lot better a lot more better players came and we took the program to better heights or whatever and, you know played there and then got drafted to Columbus where I met this clown man in 2013 you know speaky fast you know <laughs> you know no man no video oh dude no. <laughs> but he was eating the pizza and the side of the fish after he scored and stuff but, um, <laughs> yeah, it was cool having Dom there, you know, like an older, an older head who's been there. Um, I still, I still old name. <laughs> oh, we, we don't know. We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but it was just good, man. You know, that's all this experience, man. Because Columbia was a terrible experience for me. He didn't play much, played here and there, but when Berhalter took over, he just transformed the way I thought about the game. The training sessions were better than ever. That I've seen and I've seen a lot of coaches training sessions like, over the world, you know. And you know, I knew I wasn't playing, um, so I was like, you know what, this is not my final destination. So after training, I would just uh, drive up to this facility, super kick, download, do, do some twos. We'll train, man, do some twos. Um, sometimes, like, I'll go this when he left, it was, it was bad because it was just me alone, so. I would just go there sometimes 5 a.m. in the morning until they started giving me the key because um, just train, I'll just say I'll go for 45 minutes, you know, I would say 40 and like an hour and a half, two hours, I'm still there and it was just my 
place to like just forget about the failures. You know, like so I'll just train, 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 go home, cook, eat, sleep, you know, watch some games and then do the same thing. So I'll do that maybe three times a week, depending on how much we train. And um yeah, Greg, they started seeing me more and more. Oh man, this guy's improving. I think we have a relationship with Super Kick, Super Kick, Columbus did. And I think the guys in control was like, man, this guy, you need to stop playing this guy. And then the national team came around, Stephen Hart. Um, damn, it's kind of long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So Stephen Hart, uh, Canadian, Trinidad, and. Uh, it's actually my first time hearing your story, to be honest. I'm really intrigued. Yeah, so uh, he did not. Steve, yo, you're, I've known you for a while, but I've never heard the story. Yeah, yeah. So, Stephen Hart, um, I was in Columbus, this is 2012. You know, wasn't getting a lot of burn, a lot of playing time. And so, I wasn't called into the Gold Cup squad. That was, prior to that, I never went into the youth national team. But, um, uh, yeah, so he reached out to me and was like, hey, one of the midfielders are going back to their club in, in Genk, Belgium. So uh, we need you to come in for our quarterfinals against Mexico. Um, you probably won't play, but just to, I see you as the next guy for me, you know? And I was like, okay, cool. I was just happy to be there, you know? It was like sold out uh, Georgia Dome, you know? It was a good experience. I trained with, it was the first time I've seen Kenyon Jones and those guys and see how they are. You always see them in the EPL, you know? So I was like, when they saw me, they were like, this skinny guy, where is he going? And I remember like two minutes into training. You gave that tackle? I tackled, I tackled, <laughs> I tackled so hard. And they were like, yeah, this guy's gonna be here for a while. You know, because I know like everyone always look at me frail. Oh, so bro. I was like, you know what, I have to bring something different. <laughs> I, 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 I did not even know he was gonna say tackle by it. As soon you as know, I had to I had to do it. He said two things on the tackle. Can you do it? Relax on the tackle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll go for the tackle on this guy. Is, anyway, yeah. So we did that and we went to Saudi Arabia after and you know I got to play in some really good teams for a tournament and you know they were like yeah man we want you around the national team for a while um, like what you do and uh, the first year I was I mean I was playing some minutes but I wasn't starting. So I, I made a plan. I, I'm a guy I plan a lot, I write a lot. I was like, all right, these two guys are in front of me. They play in Europe. How can I be better than them playing where I'm playing? So I watch every touch they make, the way they look over their shoulders, the way, everything. I was like, you know, I'm gonna go home and train, same super kick and imagine the same thing. And I did over and over and over until eventually I remember the day when Hart was like, yeah, you're starting. You know, I, you know, I couldn't sleep the night before. <laughs> I couldn't sleep. I forgot against who we played. Like, my heart was just going crazy. And then I was like, you know what? I remember uh, my dad was like, whenever you touch the ball, you know, it's football. It's like, you training with the wall, you train with someone else. Like, it'll never, it'll never change, you know? The difference is who can make the least mistakes and who can play the quickest, the fastest, you know? So I was like, all right took that into the game and did well, and then it just took off from there at the national team. Uh, so after Columbus, I went to, we parted ways mutually. Um, they offered me a contract, but I didn't like it because I didn't see myself there. And Rojato was good enough, you know, to tell me, I, I keep on moving, you know, you can part ways. And my last game with Columbus was in the playoffs against DC. We beat them like 4-0, and I ended up playing like whole second half because of injury. Crazy things happened and they were really impressed and they reached out uh, to me right away. Hey, we want you to come in and train. Uh, we have a deal on the table, but we just need to see you. DC. This was in DC, right? You saw Dom knows a little bit of that story and you know, we'll kind of fast forward through it. Went there, did really well. Then another deal from Israel came, like a deal that I, and no one would ever refuse, <laughs> you know, so it was like the night before, it happened kind of quickly, um, the night before, and, you know, Ben Olsen was always so nice to me, and I man, you're doing so well, we could see with the team, blah, blah, blah. So the next day, I didn't sleep from like 3 a.m., that's when the contract came in. I didn't know how to tell Ben Olsen, like, you I have to leave to go to New York, you know, to 
take a flight to go to Israel before the deadline. Yeah. So I was, telling, I was asking Patrick Nayako, I was like, man, uh, what should I do? He's like, you wanted to always do this, so do it. So that was, the last, that was the first, that's the only thing I needed to hear. I saw Ben Austin after training, when we were going to lunch, I was like, hey, um, how are you, man? <laughs> He's like, good, how are you, keep on, good training session. I was like, yeah, thanks, oh, but um, Bye, I actually man. have to go. He's like, what do you mean? I have to go, uh, team in Israel offered, and I don't know how to tell you, you yeah. know. And <clears throat> he was like, well, that hurts, but, you know, um, that's just life. And it was just that, and I was like, um, all right. So I went to Canuga, went up to New York, packed. They just let you go? Yeah. It was kind of like, <laughs> yeah. They, I mean, they didn't have a choice. I wasn't signed to them. Uh, if I was going to another league, I mean, another team, I couldn't have left. But it's out of the country. It's a different league, you know? So I went home, packed, you know, my girlfriend at the time was crying, and I'm crying, but at the same time, I'm like, I'm going to Israel. <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll, I'll go fade the way, and then you come like, like a yeah. month or two. Um, so when I was at the airport the night, checking in, they said, yo, we don't see your reservation. And I was like, no, here's everything. And here, I even showed them the contract, because I'm like, this can't be happening. You are, you are. So some things went on with the agent and the club, and the club canceled my contract. So I was just stuck there at the airport. My wife had to pull them out. Fiance, like, and she had to come get me, and I was stuck. I didn't have a club. I reached back out to DC wow. and that, and there, no. I'm not going to mention any name, but there, upper head, it was like no chance, but Ben Austin was open to him, right? Um, so I was stuck. Which is too good to be honest from them. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, it's okay, but it, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. From my point of view, it's stupid because it's nothing to do. It's an opportunity mm -hmm. for you to make more money in a better league. Yeah. Things didn't work out your way, you yeah. be honest with them, you yeah. know. But everybody thinks they did yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe they saw it like as a slap in their face, like yeah. I guess, yeah. you know. Yeah. So. They would have seen it as weakness you need to keep that. Like, yeah. Just yeah. soft. And I, and I told I told them I understand. I just left it at that and we still kept in touch for a little bit after. And then um, I reached out to my, my old college coaches, like Look, man, I, I don't have a team. I'm watching these guys on TV and MLS. My agent wasn't doing anything. And that's when I started working for myself. I was like, I'm not going to work with any agent. They could work with me, but I'm not working for you. You uh -huh. know? So that's how I started thinking, um, controlling everything, and everything goes through me. Um, and he called me at NESL team in Florida. And I was like, Come to <laughs> you know, because I didn't know, and yeah. you know, they flew me out, they were very interested. Tony Miola was the coach, um, went there, they were like, all right, we want to see how you can feel fit and stuff. <laughs> the first three minutes, the GM, the technical director, pulled me aside, hey, after you show, please just come straight to a hospital. <laughs> you know, and then beside me, and then I played there, and they were really good to me, man. Like, they treated me well. Jacksonville, Armada. They were, and they had a lot of, they had a guy that won the, the, the Bundesliga. Though like that league had a lot of you know, ex-players that did well yeah. in Europe. And they were paying well, yeah, yeah, treating the players was, well. Money I loved, I loved the league, you know. Yeah, and, um, and Cosmos, Cosmos was good. Cosmos. I was a good league, it was very competitive. It wasn't always like run like 100 miles per hour. It was just like tactical, you know. It was, it was just a good time. And, uh, that league folded, and then um, Charlotte just came out of the blues, man. Like, like they reached out to me, and I didn't have a club, and I was like, no chance, Charlotte. That sounds like a country, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm not going to no countryside. There. I grew up in the countryside. I need city, you know. And then like, I started to find out more about the the, um, the team, and I saw that Enzo was here. Me and Enzo actually played region team together. And I, I really like the way he played, so I'm like, you know what? I'm going here for Enzo, you know? Like, he, I, I, I don't know anyone. Yeah. And Bilal, you know Bilal, he was our captain before. Um, he was from Atlanta, he's from Atlanta too. And um, when I came here, Enzo left to go to uh, Colorado. I was like, yo, why are you from here? <laughs> I was like, yo, that's, that's messed up, but nah. But um, it was still good. The team last year, the guys were good and cool, and just ended up here. This is only your second year? Yeah, second year. Nah, 
second and uh, yeah, but then that was a lot of time now. Yeah. 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 Out close tonight. This time he scores. Here they come again. Chance for the shot. And in oh. it goes. It's sensational from Ricardo Bacanegra. Martinez! He's done it again! A resounding 4 0 victory for Charlotte Independence. Long story. Uh, football, as you know, Gallier, but it's all I care about since I'm a kid. Like Ivan and Aaron and Abdul. I met boy here. I told my parents as soon as I was a baby, I want to do this. Uh, my parents, every year, they were like, what you want to do at school, what you want to do. Every year it was the same. And people were like, no, but you know, this is only for a few people. And the following year, I was writing soccer player. Because back home it's football, but for yeah. other parents, so soccer player. And then every year my dad was taking me to the club of the city, but now he's too young, so I was coming home crying my eyes out. Oh, I'm better than these guys. Why should I? And my dad was like, oh, Let's try for another sport, and then I try. I tried to follow my brother, who was really good at martial arts. And I was like, no, this is not what I like. And then one year, I went there, and the coach was from the same island as my parents. My parents are from Guadeloupe, born and raised over there. But they came to France for a better life, for make money and stuff. I'm born in Paris, but I in the neighborhood, and raised also. And that guy so he touched the ball and he was like, it's not my problem if he doesn't have the, if you know, if he's a year younger, he's gonna start with me. And he started like that, so I played for the club of my town for six years. Then uh, my dad and myself and the whole family, we are competitive like crazy. So he was like, okay, the level has to change for you because you told us that you want to do that, so let's go to the higher club in the neighborhood. So we went just five minutes away from my previous club. And uh, that year, one coach told my dad, uh, do you know about Pierre And then at the time, we didn't know anything. And then uh, the coach said, yeah, I think Steven's got everything to, to make it to Pierre and stuff like that. So uh, that's the paper you have to everything inside and send him yourself and I'm gonna send myself through the club the same paper and then uh, I started to like doing tests but first of all it's like from the in Paris we call it this department which is like I'm from 93 but there is 94 Seven five seven 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 eight nine one nine two. Like maybe residence. Yeah. Oh, okay. You okay. Know, yeah, yeah, I know. You know, but yeah. inside nine three there is maybe thirty cities. You know, so I made it to that team. Then from that team we went to play against all the guys who made it to be in the team of nine two seven seven blah blah blah, and then. Like up to July, it was the final thing, so I made it to Cap them. So from the all the way to the start, we are like back in the days we were 1,200, and then we are picking up 24 players. So I made it to that. Yeah, and then it's not it's not it's not because you made it that you're gonna be professional. Because every year after that, at the end of the year, the guys was not like making enough progress. They are told to, to go home. So I stayed there for three years. After the, the last year, you're playing for the team of captain. So I was captain there at the time. I started to make like the, the test for the national team also. I got to the national team. U16. Uh, U16, starting with U16. 
after I played for four years, we won the under 17 2004 against Spain. World Cup. Uh, the European, yes. European again, which had uh, against Fabregas, Mickey. You're in that uh, Netflix documentary, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah of Benzema. Yeah. And, uh, after Clairefontaine, because Clairefontaine is a pre academy, and then after that, you have to go to an academy which, for you guys, you know, New York, Liverpool, uh, uh, Houston. So I had to, I could have signed whatever I wanted in France, also in Europe, but Clairefontaine refused to let people that they made go abroad because they would be like, it's not fair on us in France, and they like threaten you. So they were like, uh, if you go, if you sign for Bayern München, like you're not gonna play with us anymore, you know. So I had my dad, my parents met all of these guys back in the days. I went once to England to see uh, Nottingham Forest facilities, and we kept that quiet. We didn't say anything to anyone. But Clairefontaine is always three steps ahead of him. <laughs> so I came back from holidays, and then the, the main guy, the director, so looked at me. Was and he said, How was your holidays? I was like, Yeah, it was good. And how was England? Then I. I don't know what you're talking about. And he said, I know everything. But I never had any problem. They love my parents and stuff. So gave it cool with me, but I was like, oh, I didn't go to a big club, even though Nottingham is big, but you get me, yeah. it wasn't Chelsea, and yeah. they found out, so I was like, okay, well, so I decided to sign for Nantes, after uh, an Imbroglio, is Imbroglio English? Do you understand the Imbroglio? No, this is French. I meant to sign for Strasbourg, everything was fine, and then, this is how when early I understood that football world was crazy, soccer world. Because my agent at the time used to be in football and they had a problem with the guy of Strasbourg. Back in the days, nothing to do with me. So Strasbourg phoned my dad and say, they phoned the agent, the judge phoned my dad and say, yes, yeah, Strasbourg doesn't want Steven anymore. And it was fine because I could have signed whatever I wanted, but for my career, for school, and for the football, myself and my family, we were thinking that it was the best place, right? So my dad phoned me, I remember that, and then, yeah, they don't want you anymore, and what you want to do? And I say, well, I, my pride is unreal. So I was like, no, it's fine, no problem. They don't want me, they are lost, it's fine. Following them, my dad told me, now they want you again. I said, Dad, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not like a toy, you know? <laughs> what if I say yes, and then I go there and they treat me bad because of what happened between them, and I didn't want to do that, that to happen. So I went to Nantes. So uh, uh, Nantes was in top division. Yeah, so I went uh, U16 for, Two months, then I got with the U18. Uh, like played really well at the end of this year, so I won the U17. I came back with the U18 for one game. After that, we played PSG, <coughs> and then everybody like it was a big game on PSG, so everybody from the whole academy, coaches and stuff were there. And then the sport director back in the days was there and he said, who is this kid? And uh, how is possible nobody talk to me about this kid talking about me? And uh, the following week, they told me to go with the reserve team. And I played really well for um, nine games. And then the coach of the first team, came and talked to me at this time, I'm just, I just turned 18, and he said, listen, we are not doing well with the first team, I saw you play many times, 
if we are not winning this weekend, next week you are making your debut with us. So I was like, okay, no problem. This was on a Tuesday, on Saturday, I'm playing with the reserve, last minute, the cross, the guy think he's going to score, I'm tackling like the one I like to do, and the guy who kicked my foot that hard, he broke my, uh, my ankle. So I, I have to put uh, that thing on my leg and stuff, and I'm devastated, and I'm like, oh gosh. But I still sign professional with now. Uh, even though I could have still at the time go wherever I wanted because of the Euro 17, you know. So I had like all of these clubs like Liverpool and stuff like that. But just now I'm not thinking about anything, just about my, my health. Like, because, yeah. yeah, because I'm like, you know, we know injury, you can be a different player before and after. And uh, they are like big Steven, don't go away of the future of the club. I'm like, guys, just now, I just want to know if I'm going to be able to run again because you know it's something bad. And I ended up signing for them, and I remember myself telling them and my dad, like looking at them in their eyes, don't sign my son if you're not going to play because this is not the way he is. You know, this guy is a competitor, he has to play if not, it's not. So I signed three years for now, for my first professional contract. In three years, I never played one second in the first year. Between the second, uh, at the second year, I got a loan in the top league in France. I managed to make my debut there in the top league. After this year, I came back to Mount, we went down, right? So they are in second league. Even this year, they never played me one second. So after that, first time I'm facing like uh, I'm unemployed. So the whole country is like, what is happening? Because people were saying basically that back home I'm really known, and people were like, yes, yeah, Steven's gonna be the next big thing in French national team, blah blah blah. And then uh, I got a phone call from. Uh, a guy who used to follow me when he was at Chelsea and he's talking to me on the phone but for me it's a joke because this is good that you're making some time with your friends and I'm like yeah whatever and the guy was like excuse me and I'm like oh this could be serious so he's like yeah I used to want you when I was at Chelsea now I'm in, I'm in Scotland at Hibernians would you like to come here and I say my dad always told me I cannot say no without I'm seeing things from my own eyes, so I go for it. So he said, okay. I went there, first day I arrived there, I told my dad, I said, tell everybody else who want me, think I want to stay here. I fell in love with the place. In 14 years, that's the best place I've ever been because you really feel that you're professional. It's unreal. You get to the facilities, you've got the kid man, you've got the, the chef, you have everything, TV, you have the room for warming up like you would like to do, you can work on your touch and everything. So I stayed there for three years, and after that I started my work tour because I played in seven countries. So after that I went to Portugal, played really well, got player of the year in second division. And then I wanted to continue there because the country, the football, that's my type of football. Like, you know, they pass the ball, they play with their mind, they know what to do and they play. You can be bottom of the league, you're going to play against the top team, and the coach is going to say, hey, we are not leaving the stadium, we are playing football, which is my philosophy, you know what I mean? So I had an offer from a uh, top league, like, but like, for a matter of few euros, we didn't understand each other. So I had an offer from Dinamo Bucharest, which is used a huge club in Romania. But I was like, nah, I'm not going to do it in Romania. All of 
these things in their careers, not to end up in Romania, but I didn't want to stay unemployed again. So I said, okay, I'm going. But I am that type of guy. If my heart doesn't want, it's better I don't go. You're gonna understand why. So at the beginning, the coach was on the phone, yeah, I want to make you the leader of my team, blah, blah, blah. I arrived there, the guys treated me really well. And I wondered, wow, what's going on here? I'm in Romania. <laughs> you know, I'm thinking like that, you know. I'm phoning my parents, I'm phoning my friends. Like, I'm not feeling well. So after two or three weeks, I say I need to do something. So I went to see the chairman. The, the chairman is the same for you, right? The president, the president of the club. Yeah. I say, I need to talk to you. And I say, I want to go finish my contract now. And he looked at me, because at the time I'm just 25, so it's still young in football, mm -hmm. but I know what I want. And he's like, Stephen, why? And I say, you want to know why? I open my little bag, I pull a paper, and I wrote everything that I mm -hmm. And I'm not going to lie, I, I destroy the coach. I say, listen, you picked me from a beautiful year in Portugal. I could have stayed there. I say no to other team to come to you to be tricking like this. Uh, I just want to be happy in my life and my happiness is not here. And he looked at me and he says, Steven, there is no way I'm letting you go. No way. And I say, and he say, you don't even know how many people who found us when they knew you were gonna sign to say you're signing a very good player, professional and stuff like that. So he said to me, I'm gonna do something about the coaching give me give me a few weeks I was so sad because I didn't want to leave that meeting without telling my parents that's me free, right? Two weeks after we playing home, we drew one one. I go to the to the club one one day, the coach is fire. The president came to me, looked at me, what did I tell you two weeks ago? Now it's time for you to shine. New coach arrived, first game, first goal. We are reaching the Europa League, I'm playing, I'm scoring, I'm happy. A new relationship with the coach, crazy. Unbelievable. The guy trusts me like crazy. Let's say it's my last birthday today, but it's a Monday. Coach, it's my last birthday. Stephen, go home. I know you're going to work at home. When you're coming back, tell all the players, hey, if you have a problem, go and see me. So that was our relationship. So I'm free, I'm playing, my name starts to shine again. We're finishing fourth, so we're qualifying. We're getting qualified to the Europa League. But Romania, it's like this kind of place where you know money-wise you can have problems, right? So they pay you basically when they want, right? <laughs> and between me and you, if you perform, you get paid. If you don't perform, I'm fighting. Yeah. But yeah, the way I am, I cannot get to the local room getting my own money without knowing that you guys are going home without no money, right? And we had a discussion yesterday about people are telling us that football is a sports, sports, uh, yeah, it's a no, it's collect team sports, yeah. but it's the most individual sports ever. So I used to wait see the president, yeah, but if I got my money, I want the other one, I'm too like, and you to get your money. I'm not like that. And maybe because it's the way I've been raised, because I'm from the neighborhood, you know, if I eat, you guys have to eat. I cannot look at you, handshake you every day, see when you got the money. No, I didn't, I'm knowing that I get it, right? So we finished the season, they owed me a crazy amount of money that I'm not going to say. So I say, okay, now we're in Europa League, I played well. They have to show me that they're giving me at least a little bit of that amount of money during my holidays. If not, I'm not turning back. One week, guys, I'm on holidays, checking my bank account, nothing, two weeks, nothing. I met people on holidays, oh, Stephen, but your team did not start training yesterday? I said, yes. So what are you doing here? Well, I'm on holidays, well, I'm not going to go. Simple. So I went after a month, 
with my lawyer. We finished our contract. The same chairman who did fire the coach for me was like angry with me, Steven, why did you do that to us? I say, President, what do you mean what I did? That? Why did I do that for, to you? I say, you know why? I say, I'm not from the country. You know what it means, like you say, you know what it means to leave everybody behind you going by yourself to another country? I'm not from here. It's not like I can phone an auntie, an uncle, yeah, I'm short on money, can you send me? You know, because you have things to pay back home. I've got a flat, friends, you know it's money. So I cannot do to my bank every two weeks, yeah, the club didn't pay me. It's not my problem, sir. you need to send the money. So I, I terminated my contract, terminated my contract, then uh, this was a big story in the news because like the fans didn't know and then that chairman asked to quit the club a few months after that cause of me because like people were like, because there is a president and there is the guy who's giving the money. So the guy ahead of him say, how did you let Steven leave without telling me? So that was a big fight and the guy decided to quit the club. So I stayed, I had offer from other places to go back to Portugal, the top league this time. And then uh, I was just waiting for my plane tickets. I say no to everybody else. My plane tickets never arrived. So the transfer windows is closed. I'm getting offer, but it's not the money I'm looking for. So I'm like, no, 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 stay the not wait for six months. That same club, yes, you heard, that same club who didn't send me the plane tickets, coming back to me six months after to give me a contract again. And I'm like, no, this is not real. Like, something is wrong. So I went with my big brother and I told the coach I'm not signing any paper until you're telling me why you disappeared six months ago because those of you I didn't play for six months. And then he said, Yeah, it's the board, they didn't want to give you the money you deserve. I wanted you. The team was fifth in the league, just behind Benfica, Porto Sporting, Braga. And I was like, why do you need me to say because we still have the same problem? So I signed, I played there the first ten games, some of the guys were winning and stuff. But he had problem with the board, he got the sack, as soon as he got the sack, he made the side. the sack. Being treated like I hope and pray that nobody's going through what I did because the club was giving me letters every Monday telling me the day and the time I could only show myself at the facilities. If not, I was in trouble. Sometimes I was training only twice a week and that was it. I asked him many times to talk with the coach because it was one of his decisions. Refused, turned it back on me. I terminated my contract again. Stayed, we were playing for six months. Got another team in Portugal, top league again. They were bottom of the league. Five points. The coach never worked with me, but he always heard how I was. And my year in Portugal in the second league when I got player of the year, like you know, always help you bounce back because people are still thinking about you. So I went there and then uh, everybody were like, oh, you're going to have a relegation on your city because back home, if you finish in the bottom two, you're going down, which is not the case here. So the pressure is unreal because the life of a club, of a city, depends on what you're doing every week, you know? So I was like, okay, I'm up for it. I know the way I am, we're not gonna go down. Uh, five points when I arrived, we stayed in the league uh, on the last game, we didn't go down. And uh, the coach looked at me in the eyes, yes, he will take you for everything. I played 16 games out of 20. Uh, you went with us a lot. Uh, I signed a new year, two years in contract. I'm going to give you a new contract in 2019. I'm still waiting for that new contract. I had things from Kazakhstan. I think I did talk to with you when we went to Laudan. Kazakhstan, crazy amount of money, but I'm, 
I'm just quitting Portugal Top League, which is, uh, you know, after England, France, Germany, you know, Portugal is very good. I can guarantee you that the lifestyle, the football, and everything. I'm like, no, oh, I can't go to Kazakhstan. And then I'm looking at this amount of money, and I'm like, oh, I can't go to Kazakhstan. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I'm like, no, 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 you played well. Then the paper was talking about you. Well, you're going to have a trap. Anyway, didn't send for Kazakhstan. Stayed six months again unemployed. I had a team uh, wanting me in Indonesia. For me, Asia was a no, but the money was good. And the guy who, which was talking to me was like, yeah, you can make great money for a short time, but you know, this amount in Europe now, it's going to be difficult for you. So I went there, but the facilities, everything was bad. So I said, no. I went back, a team from Greece wanting me from the same situation as my last team in Portugal, fighting for relegation, blah, 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 we need your experience. We stayed in the league again. I signed a two years and a half contract when I signed. And the two years, it was six months plus two. So if we stayed, I had the plus two. We stayed, chairman had a meeting with me, Steven, you go to go and have money to pay you. So I said, no, this is not my problem. I never forced you to sign. But I've been in those situations before, so I was like, I, I, I'm not going to fight and stay somewhere. Nobody wants me. It's not my country. You know what I mean? You walk in the street, you have to look over your shoulder because things can happen in football. Everything can happen. I have to tell you, you know? So I decided to quit one more time and then uh, got a phone call from an agent and said, yeah, I've got something. Malaysia, and I said no, and he said no, the coach is Portuguese, he knows you from Portugal, he said you can make that much of money, blah, 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 I looked at the contract, I was like, oh, Malaysia, I think I'm going to go, so I looked, I, I googled everything, I went, and I had one of the best years of my life, playing there and stuff, and uh, but they signed a play, like you have only five foreign players, by team, so they sign you one year, and it depends how you perform, you're signing a new deal or not. I did really well, I played every game except you. But uh, our coach, who was like a seven father to me one more time, told me the, the week before the, the day, the, the last game, before everybody, Steven, I'm not going to stay at the club. There is too many people inside the club. I appreciate you a lot, so I want to take me in advance for you to find a solution, you know. I say, coach, if you don't stay here, there is no way I'm staying here. Because I manage here because of you, you know. So I left, and then uh, I ended up in Charlotte. So I've been staying in three different countries. I, I ended up here because of an agent who wanted to work with me. Years ago, we got back on track and said, Oh, Steven, I lost you for two, three years, but you've been playing there and there. And yeah, I've got, uh, I've got a few teams in the USA. Would you like to go? And I was like, Well, you know, I'm not scared to, to travel, as you can understand now. I said, I'm not scared to travel. And then uh, the coach, Mike Guinness, who was there at the beginning, like, knew me from Scotland, and uh, things went fast. And then, so what if I could have this more, blah, blah, and then uh, I ended up being here with you guys, and then, yeah, the season's not been what we were expecting, what I was expecting, I was telling you yesterday, I'm going to live here, wondering myself, how come we didn't do better than that, because the local room, we have good player, but some, sometimes like that, you cannot explain it, and we didn't have like, you know, that thing to, even if we were not doing well to just get one point, you know, we were getting that goal and we were losing. So that's my life. In, I know it was kind of long, but trust me, it's very short because yeah. wow. if I have to explain everything, there is things that I didn't talk about. Yeah. But uh, yeah, free continent, uh, happy guy. Obviously happy to have met you. I hope that's the way I am that 
we still going to be in touch in one year, two years, and for, for life, because that's the way I am, you know. After I know that, you know, it's difficult when, let's say next year, I don't know, I can end up back in Europe and you guys are in America. But now we've got social media, we've got things, so, so yeah, that's, that's my career in, in a kind of long explanation, but yeah, yeah, yeah. at the same time. They all dive into the season in a sec, but down, you know, I'm going to finish this out. Wow. <laughs> ah, ah. Yeah. Wow. Um, I mean, it's been a long talk, I think. Like, everybody said a lot of stuff. I'm going to just keep my really short, because uh, pretty much you guys kind of like nailed it and everything that you guys have been saying. Um, like myself, I'm born and raised in Africa. Um, and I think I, I've told Kima a little bit about this. You, you know when you are good at doing something when somebody tells you you're good. And then bottom line, that's it. My dad was in the military. All I knew was yes sir, no sir. And when you grow up, you're gonna be in the military. That's how it is. Uh, all my friends are in the military right now. So, um, you know, growing up, soccer is the only thing that we play in Africa. Just like over here, I wanna say maybe football is the main thing, or whatever you wanna call it. Or baseball, depending upon what state you live in. <laughs> yeah, so in Africa, all we know is so. And, and as a kid, um, I mean, I'm like, I'm confident with this. Or even keep on the street sometimes. Anything that is wrong, you kick it. And that's what, that's what we used to do. Um, but it gets to a point in time when you're growing up and you're playing, and like I said, somebody comes to you and be like, you have potential, that is when you know you got it. And I think I, I was. I was fortunate to be in that situation where a lot of people came to me telling me, I think you can pursue soccer. So, uh, this was when we were like nine, whatever, you know, like, because I, I had the speed and I mean, I, I didn't have the finesse, which is like, you know, a whole lot of like the Messi style, Ronaldo style, or the Aaron dribbling number 10 style, you know, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> But it, it, it was more like people were telling me you were good, and sometimes even when I used to go play with kids, I didn't even get the chance to play because I was not good enough at that point. But like I said, the more people tell you you're good, the more you know you have it. Fast forward, um, high school, um, to college. Still in Africa? Or Still in Africa. Africa. Yeah, before college, um, I had that potential of being sold to, to a team in Europe. And that was when that's that's the first time I met Sule Muntari, uh, Asian. For the it was it was sort of like an academy. It's back home we just you form a team, you have a coach, and you guys just yeah. train. So it's just yeah. called an academy. But right now it's called it's called International yeah. Allies. Right now it's a very it's a very big club over there. That's when I met most of the guys that played in USL. Uh, I have a jersey in my locker. Odro, uh, all those guys. Yeah. They now play for the academy. So. So back, back home, when I was growing then, it was just like, we all fun together and just play, you know, we just go out and play. So, um, I had that potential of being, you know, sold out there. But again, I told you, when I was back home, it's, I was in the military, so it was yes sir, no sir, you're gonna join the military when you're done. But, you know, when people told me I had a potential, I told my mom, I really wanna, I don't wanna, I don't wanna go to the military. So I can stay in school. My dad is like, you gotta choose because my dad was in the military. It's like, you my son, you gotta go in the military. <laughs> so it was more like a toss up, but I mean, with a lot of talk with my family, my mom is like, okay, I want you to go to school. Again, education is not big in Africa, but my mom wanted me to be like, you know, at the first, whatever, to finish school. So it was more like, okay, I really want to go to uh, go to school and play soccer at the same time. Um, fast forward, um, one of my agents, right now, he's not, I'm saying one of my agents because he came with uh, one of the coaches from Virginia Commonwealth, they came to scout. I did not want to play that game because I thought it was, when you live in Africa, you know, sometimes people tell you a whole lot of stuff, like Ivan said, when your dad or dad's dream trying to get a visa, you pay for, you pay for that, like, people pay like $20,000 just to get <laughs> a visa. So it was like, yeah, this coach is coming in, to blah, blah, blah. And I was like, eh, forget it, it's not gonna happen, you know. But then a lot of my friends convinced me, 
and I told the story again. I played a game five minutes with the coach, just picked me up on it. He said, I saw your speed, and I knew I've never had that before. Like, I've never seen like that, anything like that before. So he, he just, and that, that's a fact. Like, that is one of, that's why, I, otherwise, I'll probably won't be here. So at the end, he talked to me. I want you, blah, blah, blah. I said, okay, make it happen. Um, again, I thought it was a joke. The next thing I know, the people from VCU came. You go to America. I mean, think about it. I want, I want this to sink in a little bit. A kid in Africa, you see TV, what TV, and you see America. And somebody <laughs> told you, you're going to America. You know that film. <laughs> it, I watched it right like oh, Bro, my, my mind was blown. I'm like, you it's kidding me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, no, I'm going to America. Bro, I could not sleep for like a week knowing I was going to go to America. It, I mean, to me, it was everything. And I told my dad, I'm like, forget about the military. <laughs> but then my mom was like, okay, at the end of the day, I know you want to play, but you got to go to school. And, and that was the deal. That was the deal that I signed with my, with my parents. So, so, came to college. I bought out in college, and again, um, that's when I found out, okay, you can get scouted to MLS. Fast forward, but to, after two years in college, I was able to get drafted. Um, 2006, I know it's a long time ago for you guys. <laughs> you know, <laughs> 2006, I uh, got drafted to Dallas MLS, and I want, I want to say something, and I think everybody has said it, but sometimes people don't. Soccer, you can dream about it, but sometimes you're not ready for it. And, and it's easy to dream that you want to play soccer, but you guys don't know the hardship that comes with playing soccer. It, it's tough. And, and you guys have witnessed that in this, in this locker room, and I think where you played, you've seen that. Not so many people can just come out when, it's, when the situations are down. It's really tough to stay in that plateau level. It's, it's, it's really hard. You know this in Columbus. I was in the depression state, and you remember this. Kivan used to come to my house. We used to sit and we used to talk because the coach wasn't playing me, and I was just down. And at that time, I had signed a new contract, and it was a good contract too. Oh, let me interject. Yo, <laughs> yeah, he was the man in Columbus, yeah, coming from Chicago, Columbus. Everyone was coming, were coming to games to see him. You know, so. After a while he wasn't playing, you know, if I'm if I'm him, I'll be depressed too. So I'm like, man, this is a guy I used to say on TV, you know, I became friends. Like, I need to go and see if he's okay. And that kind of strengthened our relationship. So, yeah, 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 yeah. It was, it, it was tough, you know. And I've been in that situation twice. Like I said, it, it's 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 good playing, but sometimes when when things go down, it goes south, and and it's it's. A, you become a good player when you're able to dig yourself deep and come out of this. And, and there have been situations where it has happened. That's when me and Kiva, when you see us playing twos, it's not because we've been, we've been doing this since Colombo just to get out of depression. We've been going to what he said, uh, what is it? Yeah, just to train, just to, to get our mind you know, away from everything. And, 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 and that is how it's been. it's been. It's been a great journey for me, you know, to sum everything up. Um, I don't think, I think, I think the common denominator about this whole thing is we all did not think we were going to be here. And that's a fact. I mean, I, I went through a similar situation with this guy last year in, um, in uh, Montreal. The coach came, it wasn't even about my performance, I don't want you. The whole year I did not even touch a ball. I did not play a single game. I did not start a single game and this is me coming from over 300 MLS games, you know, start and so a coach can make you a break. That's one thing I want to know. People don't know a coach can either make you a break. And he almost broke me. But um, at the end of the year, you know, similar situation, no contract. You know, the last thing we all thought was to play USL. But you know, they always have to say when sometimes life life gives you a life you let you make lemonade. And that's what we do. We we, we are fighters, we all wanna it's a good <laughs> saying. <laughs> we all fighters, we all want to play, we love this game, and that's why we took this job. The money's not great, we all know it. I mean, the soccer is not the best in the world, we all know it, but because of the love of the game, we here playing and we here grinding up. So, I mean, it's okay to dream, have fun, enjoy the game, but you gotta be ready for what that comes with it. It's, we all set our different story, 
It's a roller coaster. You stay in this game long if you're smart, if you're able to like think with your head, and then just make the right plays. Play the right cards. You play as long as we have, and we we are. What is the word for it? Um, the truth or everything of, of, of how the game is, or how of how long you can play. It's all about you know being smart out here. Be patient. Yeah, lucky. lucky too. Mm -hmm. Injuries and all that. But at the end of the day, you gotta be ready for 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 the ups and downs, and, and that's one thing to put on. Yeah, I mean, talking about not expecting quality and, and to be playing with you guys. For me personally, I've never been to the major leagues. I've never played overseas in Europe. I've never really gone on international duties and these trips and things. So. I'm in the off-season chilling. I knew I was going to Charlotte getting up in November, and I'm seeing Domodoro signing. And like all you guys signing in the off-season, from my perspective, it was like, ah, <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm telling people, like, we winning this. <laughs> Charlotte is nasty, bro. We just got there and there, like, I don't know how, but we can be nasty. But yeah, bro, I mean, when you think about the season, I mean, that's, that's the last thing I wanted to talk about, kind of the season. Mm -hmm. From all your perspective, from my perspective, I've never had to deal with a coach being fired mid-season. It's the first instance it's ever happened for me. And <clears throat> going from winning one game in 15 with one coach to then going on a little run, you know, we we're all on our high horse to not winning a game from before our break in July to winning our first game this past weekend. Like, it's been one crazy roller coaster. And like you guys said, like talent doesn't give you wins. It doesn't buy you wins or anything. We have. This is the most talented team I've ever been on personally from top to bottom. And we still were going on like five games. <laughs> I mean, from your perspective, how do you guys kind of sum up this season with these coaching changes and just everything in general from your experiences? I've been through that like a lot. Uh, sometimes I have three coach in three years and stuff like that. So you, you, you have to be ready. You have to be ready because it's it's the it's part of the game. To be fair, I wasn't expecting this to happen here in the US because you know back home like firing a coach is like loads of money because you have to give him all of his money or you have to find an agreement. And I don't know if it was the same here, but I didn't see that coming, you know, so it was a big shock. But after you have to for us players, we have to get back on track, you know, it's not our decision, we have to, to get on with it, and, uh, and yeah, it's, it's, well, it's going to be a disappointment for me going home, because like you say, you know, like, there is talent here, you know, there is talent in that local group, but everyone, including myself, maybe we should have the have given a little bit more in terms of economic communication, qualities, and that we, we haven't because if we had, we would have been like in the playoff because it, it's, it should have been easy to be in the playoff spot looking at, you know, everybody's here, but it just didn't happen. So it's unfortunate. Yeah, I mean. <coughs> It's kind of tough whenever I look back at how the season's gone because part of me thinks like, you know, there's that thing of like, good players will find a way. And we definitely have good players. And so I don't want to sit here and, you know, come up with all these excuses of why the season kind of yeah. didn't go our way. But at the end of the day, um, there's good players all around the league and you're playing against good players. Yeah. Um, and everyone else is trying to find a way, you know what yeah. I mean? I think with us, there's just been so much turnaround and so much. I mean, you, we sat here and we told five completely different stories of how we got it. Yeah. Um, and there's five different philosophies in here, and there's even more in our locker room. And we've had so many different people in our locker room come in. And now, you know, we've all been here for the most part since the beginning of this year, but there's been so many different, you know, teammates that we've, we've had next to, next to us in the locker room. Yeah. You know, we, it's just been we must we must we might have played with like five, six different center backs this yeah, year, you know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah. there's there's just a lot and sometimes it takes a little bit longer to gel and figure each other out mm -hmm. and um, figure out what our philosophy is and what our capabilities are and um, you know it, sometimes it takes a lot of games to do that, especially when you have so many guys. So I think that, that has had a lot to do with it. Um, but 
uh, you know, like like everyone was saying, this has been a very, very talented locker room. It's never been a talent thing, um, but you know, we still got some figure out to do. What do we always say? We talk about talent. What do we always say when, when we talk about talent? Talent and loneliness know what? <laughs> Come on, we said it so many times. So, I don't know, like but... sometimes talent and loan is not good enough. Yeah, yeah for sure. I mean, uh, I, I would name I would name two guys in this locker room. I won't say, it, but I know you guys know that I think have talent, and I know you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, nothing bad. I'm just saying, like, but your, your talent alone doesn't make you a good player. I mean, yes, other aspect that you have to add to the game to make you better. And, and I think maybe down the road, maybe we did like it. Um, maybe the coach situation, maybe the way his 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 style of coaching wasn't what we wanted, maybe they didn't gel with the way we were as a team. Uh, but there's some less ups and down that goes with the game. Um, you know, when it's good, it's good. When it's bad, it's bad. And we, we went through a bad situation even with the talent that we had and we just couldn't rise up, you know. And, and like Aaron said, sometimes it takes time. Um, unless you man city that you can buy it. You know, everybody, <laughs> <play> <laughs> yeah, and then make it work. You know, one season out of that, it might, it might take some time. Still, they did struggle with the first. Yeah, yeah, it takes time. So it takes time. It takes time. That's a good story. You know, but you get me. It takes time to jump. So yeah, yeah it is hard sometimes. It is tough. <laughs> um, yeah, man, I think everyone is touched on that, right? It's been difficult, man. Sometimes, you know, you just want to go home and just be home. Not that, you know, giving in or anything, but mentally it's a lot, man, to lose, to not do the simple things right. Like, I'm very particular. And not about myself only, but about other people. You know, I always want people to be perfect, and that, that's one of my flaws in life. Like, I want to be perfect, so I want you to be perfect. If I'm not perfect, oh man, like, I'll, I'll go, my wife always, I'll go like weeks, like just remembering the same thing that bothers me. Same thing with other people, my wife, my parents, anything. If I don't see something that's perfect, it bothers me. Sometimes I'll come in, and this is just how it's affected me, you know. Can't point at one player and say, "Man, you know this player is horrible." Because, like, I enjoy the team. We have a lot of potential. Maybe it's time that we need, but and you know, in life, you don't have time. Yeah, you know, you sure. do it, but you yeah. can't do it's it. It's not ever. Yeah. So uh, I think it's, it's just a learning experience, man. Um, to go through what we've been through. Um, I just can't put a nail on it like, man, this was the cause of our season. This is why we went like that. But, um, I mean, talent is here. We just have to, just have to see out the air, man. It's just, it's just draining even talking about it now. Um, I got that one. And for me, too, that's why I'm really recording, I'm recording shows like that. I kind of lost my group with it personally. First time not making playoffs like that when traditionally, you know, none of the league was making playoffs, and I hold myself to that standard where I'm always just gonna be in the one in the fight. And even and we, you know, for a little while we weren't gonna make playoffs, so even now I'm just seeing all my friends and other ex teammates and stuff and team making playoffs. Like, of course, it feels uncomfortable, but it's a learning experience, and it's bound to happen at some point. We all just learn from it. You guys have X amount of experience, and you guys all know those things. So yeah, you just roll with it, and now we're here at this table, we're able to talk about these experiences and life in general. We're gonna carry that, carry this on with us. So, but yeah, I appreciate you guys calling on my show for real. Are you guys doing excellent job on my show? I really appreciate that. Hit subscribe. Let these guys know, you know, what parts of the show that you guys were intrigued by. Send them a DM. Send me a DM. Like, comment, rate. Continuously follow follow Backyard Footy on all platforms, and I appreciate you guys following along. Backyard Footy is brought to you by the Beautiful Game Network a podcast. That's bgn.fm on the internet. You can also follow them on Twitter at the bgn.fm. And Backyard Footy is also brought to you by Roughneck Scarves and Golden Gold Press. And thanks to our sponsors, you can get the best choice for custom shirts, hats, mugs, and other items for not just yourself but for your organization. 
check them, check out their amazing products at a fraction of the price and other places at goldengoldpress.com. And also thanks to Roughneck Scarves, official scarf supplier with MLS, USL, and US Soccer. Get custom scarves for your group or team at theroughneckscarves.com. Appreciate y'all, fellas. from Matthews, North Carolina, Charlotte, and Hartford here in the Eastern Conference.